Thank you very much, uh, the panelists and uh, the other audience that has joined us. My name is Edward Biketi. I'm a scientist working with uh, Microsoft Consulting. And I, we are promoting a virtual breakfast club on climate uh, re resilience agriculture, where we are looking at uh, an interactive collegial platform for promising tech enabled startups, investors, practitioners, and growth stage entities that seek to voice their thoughts and ideas to generate, generate and upscale their solutions and strengthen climate resilience for smallholder farmers in East Africa. We're starting with East Africa first before we spread to the other parts of the continent. So as MSC, uh, we have another virtual breakfast club for Asia, which is being run by another scientist there. I am in charge of the virtual breakfast club in East Africa as we grow slowly we hope to reach the whole continent. So thank you very much for joining this forum. And uh, what I can say is that uh, this platform is uh, offers and promotes and pitches content on uh, climate resilience agriculture. We have a web page where we use this platform and uh, social media handles. The platform also offers access to international chapters, to active members like you who have registered. Uh, we'll also have uh, selected applicants will also become our members and be eligible to attend monthly meetings through Zoom calls with different thematic topics that we talk about based on uh, climate resilient agriculture. And then uh, we will also be able to do some resource mobilization and investment and technology advisory uh, themes that uh, also help mentor and support to upscale promising solutions. And uh, we'll also organize special focus on webinars and in-person workshops for promising active members. Uh, of course, this, we're not, uh, it's, it, it's, it's a free of charge uh, platform. We're not charging anything. We just want to share collegially our thoughts about climate resilient agriculture. So let me start with the, panelists to introduce themselves. Mr. James Kidinji, please introduce yourself. Yeah, good day, good evening, uh, good afternoon, team. My name is Gidinji James. I work with a company called Eclectics International. I am tasked with the management of agri-tech products, agriculture technology products, and I'm glad to be part of this uh, call. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. James. Let us go to Mr. Farid Kea. Please introduce yourself. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Farid Wangara. I work with ECA Africa. I'm the principal officer and equally in charge of insurance business for the company. Thank you. Okay. Let us go to Derek Moridi. Please introduce yourself. Hi, uh, everyone. My name is Derek Morithi. I'm a farmer and also the founder and CEO of Nalima. So at Nalima, we deal with digital um, extension services um, across the agri-tech that is in the value chain. And I'm happy to be joining this session to discuss about agri-tech. OK, thank you very much uh, for joining us. Uh, we are starting small. As we know, uh, extension services in, uh, let us see, let us start with Kenya, were devolved to the counties. And uh, I'm sure all of us are aware of the disaster that has happened about that. They are no longer as functional as they used to be. So now uh, we thank God for this uh, innovative platform where ag techs are coming up to take over and riding on the mobile platforms and the digital space to help the farmers in terms of agricultural production and uh, climate resilience. You know, it's not a standalone. They're interwoven and we cannot separate them. 
So we are trying to at least step in and see what we can do because climate change is real. Uh, we have had uh, drought in Kenya, for example, 2020 to 2021, 2016, 2017, 2020 to 2022 has been the worst compounded by COVID. Yeah. So we'll start with the first topic that will go for about 10 minutes for, for the panelists to talk. And uh, I'm going to start now with a question. How can architects strengthen climate resilience of smallholders in East Africa? How can architects strengthen climate resilience of smallholders in East Africa? Let us start with you, Mr. Derek Murib. Thank you for the opportunity. So I would uh, like to narrow down to two things uh, when it comes to architect and climate resilience. One is adaptation and the other is mitigation. So we realize that ag tech have different um, use cases of technology towards um, uh, extending it in the val agriculture value chain. So we realize that technology can play even uh, in inform information areas, automation areas, and also other areas like production, uh, crop breeding and all that. But when it comes to mitigation of uh, climate strategies, when we talk about mitigations, we narrow down to challenges. Farmers are unable to predict of the changes when it comes to weather. So also this affects the farm management practices in, in the sense that, uh, like you mentioned, all this is integrated. There are other facets of agriculture, like the soil is being affected by the weather. Uh, we see um, other facets like crops themselves. So when we talk about mitigation, we are trying to inform the farmers of different strategies when they have challenges, how to take care of the farm when they have challenges. Then the other one on adaptation is how, how do they adopt or adapt to this is the weather? Uh, some of this is predictive uh, data. We are uh, learning from historical data, trying to predict how the weather changes telling them that it might rain within these seasons and even AgTech are coming to add more data onto uh, all these analyses and saying within this season, the short, short rains grow these crops. So such resilience where they are able to have economic sustenance, even with the different changes in the weather, some things that they, are, they can't control, gives them that adaptation to be able to even meet demands to the varieties that are needed in the market. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much for those insights, uh, Mr. Muridi. Uh, Farid Wangara, Mr. Farid Wangara, please uh, tell us how architects can strengthen uh, climate resilience for smallholders in East Africa. Thanks, Edward. Um, I think from where we sit, uh, largely as a like Africa, we look at it from, uh, I would say, a uh, three-form uh, uh, way of dealing with it. Number one, we are looking at it from a, a perspective of awareness and capacity. Uh, I mean, you go to the smallholder farmers across the country, and uh, by extension, uh, ECA works in almost uh, most of the sub-Saharan countries, Kenya, Rwanda, Tanzania, Zambia, and by extension, all the Comesa countries. One of the things you find, especially around the smallholder farmers, is awareness. Yeah, you, you ask them whether they're aware climate change is real. No. Uh, some know, some don't know. Uh, what, do we, what do they need to do? They're not, uh, they not so much aware of what, what needs to be done. So we begin from a process of training and capacity building. So we what we've been doing currently, like what we've done in Kenya and Tanzania is that we've gone to the village levels to be able to empower what we call village champions, train them on uh, risk, uh, I mean, the, of uh, climate change, training them on uh, ways of mitigation so that uh, beyond that, then the smallholder farmers can be able to embrace, to embrace that. Number two, uh, we are very keen on uh, 
uh, insurance. Insurance is one way of a risk mitigation strategy because we find farmers investing heavily into into their livelihoods, uh, crop and livestock and all that. And we are seeing uh, with the effects of change of climate change that people are still very traditional in terms of how they still handle their, 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 their things. But then uh, you, they have to be alive to the fact that things are changing differently. And what we've been doing largely with the smallholder farmers is to be able to offer a risk and uh, alternative to risk mitigation strategies, because sometimes you find you might not be able to change the traditional ways of looking at things, but how do you make sure that you're evolving within the traditional mechanisms? So insurance is part of the things that we do. And number three, we work also heavily around advisories. Uh, continuously, we are able to offer advisory services through I mean, through platforms, through uh, mobile phones, we are reaching out to farmers even with feature phones uh, beyond the ones who have, um, uh, I mean, smartphones. So offering advisories on what is happening, um, giving um, tips on good agronomical practices, giving tips on uh, on um, soil conservation and all that to be able planting of trees within the within the, the within their regions. All these are just efforts to be able to ensure that the smallholder farmers are being part of the conversation around climate change. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Farid Wangara. Mr. Kevin, Kelvin Dumu. Uh, my name is Kelvin Dumu. Um, I'm with, uh, I'm the CEO of uh, Global Agriculture Solutions. So what we are doing is that we provide uh, agri-machinery we do biogas installations and biodigest septic tank uh, installations. And we also do a lot of training, uh, you know, uh, to small uh, holder farmers uh, across Africa. So um, just to, you know, uh, address that question that you have uh, just asked uh, about the role of agri-tech uh, in uh, promoting climate resilience, um, I think uh, the first thing that uh, you know many companies need to do, or many uh, organizations that are working with smallholder farmers need to do, is to um, encourage smallholder farmers to uh, embrace modern uh, ways of you know you know farming. Uh, one of the biggest problems that we have experienced as a company uh, that we have seen. Uh, farmers facing is use, the, the use of traditional uh, methods of, of farming, which are not really um, climate smart, if I, if I may say so. So uh, as a company, we are trying to promote uh, uh, issues such as, uh, or methods such as precision agriculture, where, for example, uh, if one is uh, planting and applying fertilizer, you minimize wastage. Uh, you know, we train farmers on how to minimize wastage. We also train them on how to, um, you know, uh, you know, take uh, precise measurements that, uh, you know, collaborate with uh, the size of the farm. We also, um, you know, train them on uh, using modern uh, forms of agri-machinery so that they are able to ensure that uh, uh, the type of agriculture that they practice is uh, uh, much better and more sustainable as opposed to using uh, usage of um, uh, old uh, traditional and sometimes archaic ways of uh, you know tools uh, uh, for, for farming i think if you know for 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 uh, the, the startups or the agri-tech uh, uh, companies that are coming up, they should be able to uh, come up with methods that are uh, uh, what, uh, you know, uh, reflect uh, on the future that are uh, uh, in tandem with, uh, you know, the progress that the world is making today. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Ndungu. Let us go to Mr. Givinji. Mr. Givinji, please, uh, would you respond to the question, how can Actex strengthen climate resilience of smallholder farmers in East Africa? Yeah. Um, in essence, you're looking at uh, availing uh, 
uh, digital technology to this farmer. This is what we call good agricultural practices. And this will vary from one crop to another. Say, for example, if you're doing uh, carrot farming, uh, tomato farming, capsicum farming, each of these plants have their own good agricultural practices. And by GAP, in essence, I mean, you'll say if you're doing tomato farming, on day one, you do this. On day 10, you do fertilizer application. On day 13, you do uh, pruning and such. So you'll find if such uh, data is uh, availed to every farmer, and uh, technology notwithstanding, this can be in USSD format. Uh, for those who have a feature phone, it can be through a mobile app. It can be through a web portal. You know, by at, at Eclectix, uh, we already uh, have clients who are running with these solutions. So in essence, we are looking at a bringing forward uh, a farm management system. This farm management system will help the farmer to be able to track on a day-to-day -day, what am I expected to do depending on the crop that I am growing. Do I have link to certified input uh, uh, suppliers like an agrovet? Can I go onto that platform and get to access certified farm inputs? And then uh, do I actually have access to uh, professionals within the field of agriculture, agronomists, uh, farm managers, uh, and, and such. And then once I start harvesting, do I have access to markets? And on a day-to-day -day when I'm doing uh, my farming business, in terms of now touching on uh, the climate aspect, this is what we call Internet of Things, uh, IoT technology. For example, at uh, Eclectrix, uh, we have uh, a solution we call uh, the farm IoT. In essence, what this device is doing, it is seated within the farm or within a greenhouse or even within a store. And in real time, it is reading the humidity levels, the temperature levels, and you can actually set, uh, based on the crop that you are doing and the GAPs, you can actually set if the temperature goes above a given set, send me an alert. If the temperature goes below and humidity, and also we are going a step further and doing what we're calling, a, a embedding what we're calling a soil moisture and temperature sensor, so that uh, your crop is well taken care of. It is not lacking uh, nutrients. It's not lacking uh, enough water at any uh, at any given time. Uh, we also go a step further and do plant analysis, weather analysis, water analysis, and have that data recorded and uh, accessible to the farmer at any given time. And also touching on uh, the other aspect that uh, uh, a friend uh, from Inca Africa had uh, talked about insurance. Uh, if something goes wrong, uh, goes wrong within your, your farming enterprise and uh, you do not have access to an insurance service provider, then it becomes, uh, it becomes total loss. So we're also linking the farmer to these other service providers. And these service providers could be uh, funders. For example, do they have access to, to loans? Do they have access to uh, certified uh, uh, farm input suppliers, extension service providers? And we actually have gone a step, for, uh, a step further to register what we call a TVET certified institution. It's called Lati Agribusiness Solution. It teaches farmers on the farming best practices. I okay. submit. Okay. Thank you very much for that. Uh, these are very good insights, uh, gentlemen. Now let's move to the second question. And please, we want to restrict ourselves to 10 minutes only for all of you for, because time is of the essence. The next question is about uh, typologies of ag techs. So far, they have been uh, categorized into three types where we have weather and climate services. Uh, provide value actionable information to farmers 
on changing weather conditions and patterns. We also have the data-driven agriculture services, which use localized and time timely data to create information and advisory services for agricultural value chain actors and smallholders. We also have the third category, which is the agri-digital financial services that deals with insurance and credit uh, that can help uh, smallholder farmers become more resilient to climate change through these services of credit and uh, insurance. So let us start with the um, the first panelist now, uh, Mr. Derek Muraidi. Which architects, what are the names of the architects you're promoting and in which category do they fit in? And if there is another category that we I haven't mentioned, please mention it. Just in brief, please. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you for, for the question. Uh, uh, I would say all the categories are mutually exclusive. So what we're doing with Nalima is we are working on big data. And uh, when we talk about how technology has uh, is trying to be implemented in the agriculture space, there are also challenges. I think we'll talk about that in the later questions. But when you look at uh, data, how it has been in the in the historical days it's that it's stored in the most unusual ways like uh it's quite to a niche that it is good data but then uh there is no there is no way that uh the system has been or the food system has been integrating this data with with different facets of data uh when it comes to whether uh there is uh, like, for example, what uh, our friends, uh, uh, Mr. James was was mentioning on uh, having that ability to monitor, to monitor how the progress, the crop cycles are going, whether they are going according to the best practices. So I think data has been in the most sense that it is available, but it is not connected, what we call interoperability. And this mm. is what uh, Nalima we are uh, actually addressing. So mm. we are looking at integrating different facets of existing data and bringing these insights uh, through mobile access and through expertise who are willing to learn from this data to make data-driven decision-making in farm management. Okay. Okay, thank you for that, Mr. Amrady. Uh, Mr. James Kidinji. Uh, which typologies of architects are you promoting? Thank you, Edward. Under those categories, yeah. Maybe they are extra. We can categorize them more, but that okay. is just a nutshell. Yeah. That we have for now. <laughs> okay. So uh, at a very high level, we can say we have the farm ERP. Uh, this is a fully uh, fully fledged farm management system. Uh, it allows uh, the admin user or even the farmer to set the good agricultural practices per crop. In there, you're able to track your uh, farm input consumption, uh, like the quantities, uh, you bought them from what supplier and the rate. And then when you start harvesting, you're also able to track uh, the value of what you're harvesting and you're actually able to track who you're selling it to. Then on a day-to-day, -day, there are these operations that you're carrying out at the farm. Is it uh, irrigation? Is it pruning? Is it fertilizer application and such? On a day-to-day, -day, you're able to actually go in there and track that to do what uh, we are calling timesheets. Then we have another uh, solution. We are calling it the uh, eDairy uh, uh, platform. eDairy platform basically is a technology that uh, is uh, focused on uh, uh, the cooperative societies like Nyala, like Brookside that are collecting uh, milk from farmers. So we have a whole database of farmers and um, we have also at the back end a solution that is able to help that uh, cooperative society receive milk from field farmers and, and, and such. And then there's an aspect of insurance uh, whereby we already have clients who are running with this solution. 
We're calling it a farm insure. It's a fully fledged uh, farm insurance management system. Uh, additionally, there's a uh, agri-commerce, uh, like you have a Jumia, but now that uh, is fully focused on agricultural uh, uh, projects. We have, uh, in addition to the farm management system, there's uh, what we call Imifugo. Imifugo, in essence, is a, a system that will help uh, pastoralists and livestock farmers to be able to manage on a day-to-day -day the uh, operations of their farming enterprise in terms of livestock uh, farming. Okay, thank you very yeah. much, Mr. James Kibinji. Yeah, my name is Sikuku uh, McLennan. We run an outfit um, over trading and an e-commerce platform. Uh, our company is called Karim Integrated. So I've been, I've been listening to the other panelists and. Uh, I think most of our solutions are intertwined. Um, maybe if the host could um, let me share, allow me to share the screen so that I can answer the question with a, a bit of uh, uh, okay. visual. This is okay, just make it, uh, make it yeah, short, very short time. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So in terms of our solution, um, our platform is called Mazabora. So we, we mostly deal with the data-driven and ag digital financial services. So we have aggregated um, the, the value chain for dairy and poultry farmers. So we get our produce from the suppliers. We take it to the agrovets. Currently, we run about um, 21 agrovets in Transoya. We run three of our own and then the other 18 are, um, are affiliate agrovets. We have also helped uh, uh, dairy cooperatives start their own agrovets and also poultry cooperatives. Then we get the goods from these cooperatives to farmers. And then now from the farmers, we are on the second phase of introducing um, an interface where they would upload their produce and then they would uh, get it to their B2B or B2C customers. Um, Thank you. Oh, wonderful. Thank you very much. So yeah. a lot of architects uh, in Kenya. I'm told this place in Africa, we are the ones who have uh, really grabbed it like nobody's business. Anyway, yes, and I think um, even, even after this meeting, there's a lot of synergies um, I'm seeing. Um, mm -hmm. And the good thing is most of the platforms you're running are API enabled. So if any, mm -hmm. if any of the panelists are open to us working together, especially on the weather and climate services, mm. very much open to, you know, have those synergies. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Thank you very much. Can have so those discussions, yes. Yes, our first meeting, and I can see already synergies forming. Thank you very much. Okay, Mr. Kelvin Dungu, please uh, respond to the question about where your, the typologies of your architects that you're promoting are and be categorized. Yes, uh, what is the name of the yes, uh, promoting and which in which category they fit in? Yes, yes. Uh, thank you very much for that and uh, some very good um, information coming out from this discussion. So we are in the financial services uh, space, um, majorly focusing on uh, agri machinery. Um, it's, 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 uh, you know, um, you know, from our research and, uh, you know, being in this space now for around five years, there is no, um, you know, well-established, uh, uh, system or, you know, startup that, or, or, or company that is really focusing on, um, uh, ensuring that small scale farmers are able to, uh, easily access, uh, you know, agri machinery. Um, it's you know, farmers are mostly left to, um, you know, uh, uh, to themselves either to buy on 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 cash basis or you know, if they are not able to buy, they can borrow from the neighbor or you know, uh, something like that. But now, what we are doing as Global Agricultural Solutions is we are trying to uh, we have come up with a, a credit system where farmers uh, are able to easily access uh, agri-machinery 
um, and you know on credit uh, or what we call buy now pay later. Um, of course, uh, there is a whole uh, ecosystem there of uh, ensuring uh, you know the machinery, uh, tracking the machinery uh, on the farm, uh, getting the proper coordinates, GPRS coordinates, uh, to ensure that uh, you know the machinery is uh, well taken care of. Um, uh, this, uh, by itself, uh, will ensure that farmers are able to move away from using, you know, the traditional, um, uh, you know, forms of uh, farming. Uh, you know, we, in fact, in, in our in our mission, we, we are saying that the African farmer has to rethink uh, the usage of the of the hoe and move to more uh, contemporary more uh, uh, progressive ways of uh, you know farming and mm -hmm. by 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 accessing the uh, you know this agri machinery because it is, is there's a whole wide range of agri machinery that uh, many farmers do not know of and uh, we we as a company we feel that uh, or we have you know, we have actually seen uh, with our interactions with farmers each and every day, that if they are able to access um, proper agri-machinery, this is one way we can be able to uh, change uh, and make even make agriculture much more better than it is, uh, you know, right, right now. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much uh, for that, uh, those insights, Mr. Lungu. Uh, Mr. Yes. Farid Wangara. The, the, the beautiful thing I remember about Tech Africa is the picture-based insurance. Please kindly uh, enlighten us on the products that you have right now and uh, where do they fit within these categories? Because everyone is learning from each other now. Uh, thanks, Edward. Uh, like, uh, picture-based is very, very close to our heart. Um, I would say uh, because of what we do, ideally when we started off, we were more on uh, on the um, digital and uh, financial sector and insurance. But uh, because of the work that we do uh, that surrounds insurance, uh, includes a lot, a lot around advisories, includes a, around, a lot around working with other uh, stakeholders in the agriculture value chain, we more or less fit within the, all the three ecosystems in the sense that uh, we have an element of uh, uh, in uh, uh, development of agriculture insurance uh, products. Uh, and as you mentioned, we are looking at things like picture-based insurance, which is basically data-driven. It, uh, it involves taking pictures uh, for crops throughout the, the, the crop physiology from when the farmer grows the crop all the way to, to when the farmer harvests, helping insurance companies and reinsurance companies uh, to be able to view how the crop is performing, using that to identify uh, issues around pests and diseases, using that to identify uh, issues around uh, crop 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 health and all that. Uh, on the other end, we are also dealing with uh, because again, for smallholder farmers, you really have to empower them. I mean, you have to encourage them to use certified seeds. You have to encourage them to use a good fertilizer. So that means that we must work with uh, input organizations supporting those, those kind of activities, uh, working with financial institutions, encouraging them to enter into the agriculture space and lending to uh, lending to the smallholder space. So. Um, Again, on our end, we are heavy in terms of development of uh, various platforms around uh, management of uh, various uh, various uh, processes. Uh, currently, I think we are now piloting blockchain technology that would be able to enable uh, insurers and reinsurers literally pay claims at, 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 at a, by immediately a, a, a contract ends because what has been ailing the, the agriculture sector, and especially for the smallholder farmers, is literally the time it takes for an insurance company to pay claims. If uh, you pay a farmer after a, another season has started, no matter how much money you're paying the client, the farmer, it doesn't make sense because he has had to spend more money in terms of preparation for the season. But now we are on blockchain technology currently, ensuring that immediately a contract ends, then a farmer should be paid. So reducing the time it takes to pay farmers uh, claims from basically a month to, to a week or so uh, by use of, uh, um, I mean, uh, index insurance products, um, trying to ensure that um, you're scaling that to, to as many smallholder farmers and also ensuring efficiency in terms of processes. Thanks. 
Okay, thank you very much. But what, bundle uh, service of uh, Edward, PDI. Edward, yes. I have a question um, yeah. to Mr. Kerr. The insurance product, does it also apply to livestock like chicken and cow? Because we're having we're having a program which we're rolling it rolling out on Monday. We're having about six thousand poultry farmers, and they, we are going to start giving them day old chicks and feeds. And we already have off takers for the for the broiler. The broilers which are going to be uh, reared by the by the farmers, but because of course there are mortality rates, there can be an uh, uh, you know a, a, a disease here and there. The insurance product that you have, does it only apply to plants or we can also have a separate discussion in terms of livestock? Because this, this uh, yeah. program is going to target about 40,000 farmers in, in Transoya. Okay. Yes, our, our, our insurance products, are, when I talk about agriculture insurance products, I'm basically referring to crop and livestock. That's what for us, in, uh, we understand agriculture is. It's about livestock and uh, crops. So we've developed uh, various insurance products for, for livestock, and that includes chicken, pigs. I mean, um, uh, we are talking about horses, camels, and all those things. So we have all that. So I mean, on a separate discussion, we'll be able then to just discuss how, how we can synergize around that on crops. We've done that for various crops across the, across the, the, the board. So that's basically what we do. In, in terms of development of agriculture insurance. Okay, thank you very much for that. Uh, I think uh, Mr. Sikuku and Mr. Farid, the synergy I can already see it for me. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. Let us move on to the next question. This is the second last question where I'm asking. Gentlemen, how is the outreach so far for the architects? And when I ask outreach, I want you to put it for me in terms of gender categories, men and women. Kindly let us start with Mr. Gidinji. How is the outreach of your architect to the farmers? Just in, in two minutes, please just tell, to, <laughs> tell us how far, yeah. Yeah? yeah, in terms of adoption. Yeah. Mm. So uh, going by uh, one of uh, the regional projects that we are engaged on, uh, the donor has put it forward that for these projects to go on, 60% uh, have to be female, 40% have to be male. So in essence, you're finding that even as uh, mm -hmm. they are channeling these uh, beneficiaries of uh, such donations, this that uh, gender aspect that is looked into. That will vary uh, from time to time, depending on the project, uh, the project goals mm. and the funder or the donor or the project owner. Okay, so in a nutshell, how many farmers yes. have you reached so far right now? Men? Right women. now. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you're breaking. I'm asking about, sorry, I'm asking yeah. about the exact actual number of farmers. We have about 28,000. Mm -hmm. And then that now is uh, broken down into the percentage of um, male and female based on the project uh, director. Okay. That Thank is 60% 60, 60 female, 40% male. Thank you very much for that. Sure. Okay, Mr. Kelvin Ndumu, kindly respond to uh, the outreach. Yes, yes. Okay. Um, uh, under the biogas component, 80% uh, women, 20% uh, men. Uh, in the agricultural machinery component, under the ag agricultural machinery component, it's, uh, it's more of 50-50. Um, you know, uh, some machinery are popular with women, uh, say peanut butter making machines, uh, popular with women, uh, the oil press machines for, for the working tractors are more popular with, uh, with, with, with men. So it's more 50 50. Okay, thank you very much for that. Yes, Mr. Sikuku. Yes, yes. 
Mr. Sikuku, please. Yes, sir. Yeah. Um, so we have two sets of farmers. We have dairy farmers and then we have poultry farmers. On the dairy side, we're seeing a lot of, it's a male dominated industry. Um, so we have about 70% of the 45,000 farmers who are constituted in 12 dairy, um, dairy cooperatives that give KCC, Kitale, their milk, mostly men. And then on the poultry side, you find that about 80% of the 6,000 farmers we, we work with are mostly women. Okay. So for us, we've, we've seen that on the poultry side, it's mostly mm. women uh, dominated. And then mm. in terms of age, mm. find um, the younger guys are taking uh, a more subsistent approach. They keep, uh, they keep poultry and also, and also dairy animals. But mm -hmm. uh, the older generation, you find that if somebody was really concentrating on the on the dairy side, it's very rarely you'll find them um, also keeping chicken. So, so okay. you find the younger the younger farmers are more they do mostly a lot of mixed farming and they try out a lot yeah. and they're mm. very um, uh, they they they, they, they take in the technology very quickly. But the, the older guys um you really have to sit down with them and explain you know use the yeah. feature phones and the ussd yeah okay now mr farid wangara outreach uh, i would say we've been in this space for quite some time um and we are currently in almost 17 african countries uh, one key uh, we do we, apart from just the development of our insurance we are very key on matters advisory services and also fundraising we do a lot of fundraising and work with a lot of uh, developmental organizations in terms of fostering uh, what we do uh, since inception to date i think in all the countries we've worked with we we've worked with more than three million smallholder farmers uh, we are very keen on matters gender so any of our projects we do and i'm sure we've worked with you at some point uh, around around just evaluation of that and the impact perspective around it and we've seen a lot of women um, more often than not we are seeing a 60 percent percent um uptake by women compared to a 40 percent uptake by men thank you okay thank you very much uh mr derek Murady. lastly kindly just describe your outreach in terms of uh, the ag tech that you're promoting and so like i mentioned uh, yeah yeah Oh, sorry, sorry. It's okay. Yeah. Continue, continue. Yeah, so at Nalima, what we deal with is uh, is with the digital advisory and uh, mostly we deal with key stakeholders, the farmers, the agronomists, and the researchers. So far for the farmers, we've been able to reach almost 65% are women, uh, women in uh, areas of Central and Nyandarwa. And uh, in the, in the, we have a coming up pilot uh, in the next year. We are aiming to target to 12,400 farmers in that region and uh, also Nakuru region where we've been engaging with farmers also on agroforestry uh, and the good agriculture practices. And uh, I would say the bigger number of uh, 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 the gender in uh, all the stakeholders that we're interacting with are women. Even in researchers, uh, agronomists, our team agronomist herself uh, has a quite a fold of uh, experience and she greatly networks with that fellow agronomist in Nakuru. Uh, she's able to play different roles as a grocer, a farmer, and also an ag agro dealer. So most of the stakeholders are women, but also we are uh, encouraging men with another program called uh, Connect farms general merchants where we are training we are training them uh, on rabbit farming in central kenya and uh, most of the uptake has been among men uh, most men uh, 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 enrolling for this program where it's about rabbit rearing so i would say women are the greatly dominating uh, gender in our uh, in our digital agriculture solution okay thank you very much gentlemen i can see very good uh, gender representation there even from the audience, I know there are some many people clapping about it there. Now, lastly, uh, everyone has about uh, two and a half minutes to discuss this. What are the opportunities and challenges you have faced in the ag tech space? 
each of you, please, two and a half minutes for everyone. Let us start with Mr. James Kilinji here. What opportunities if, do you see and what are the challenges that you have faced? Okay, if you may allow me to share my screen. Yeah, you can go ahead. Let me know once you're able to view it from that Yes, end. yes, yes, I can view it. I don't know about the rest. Everyone else can yes, yes, see my screen? Yes, yes, Okay, great. So at the very center here, you're looking at the farm. The mm -hmm. first thing you need to do in order as now as a, as a challenge and an opportunity, you need to have a whole database of farmers mm -hmm. that you are linking to these other service providers. Mm -hmm. These other service providers that is skilled labor. Now this is where we're talking about agronomists, mm -hmm. farm managers, and uh, people who have been trained uh, specifically uh, in terms of agriculture, mm -hmm. access to markets. So the, at the very, uh, the very center is the farmer. Mm -hmm. And now when you come down here now, you want to link this farmer to markets. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have access to such data? Uh, do you have uh, willing financial institutions that can come in and do funding to and offer loans to, to these farmers? Do you have uh, certified uh, agrovets and, and, and such? And that now this is, uh, we've talked about this already, the agronomists, the farm managers and such. And now do these farmers have access to a physical institution that they can go uh, and attend uh, some training sessions on good agricultural practices? And then uh, this is where I was, I was talking about uh, Latia Agribusiness Solution, uh, uh, an enterprise owned by Eclectics International. We have trained so far over 20,000 uh, youth uh, mm -hmm. in terms of uh, agriculture. Mm -hmm. And now, uh, part of the other solutions that uh, we are now looking at, this is uh, uh, how it looks like uh, within the Agritech department at Eclectics International. This is uh, the farm insurance uh, system, this is the farm ERP system, this is the, what we are calling the agri-commerce, uh, more for Jumia for uh, the agriculture, this Imifugo for uh, those who are pasteurized and those other who are doing dairy farming, and also uh, any other livestock farming and, and such. And then this the e dairy for dairy cooperative societies as part of the projected solutions uh, for the future in terms of agriculture. Okay. Uh, thank you very much for that, Mr. Kidinji. Sure. I think uh, let us also give another person to also tell us the opportunities and challenges they have faced in the Arctic space. Mr. Kelvin Dungu, please. The floor is yours. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for, uh, for the opportunity. Okay. Um, so um, the opportunities that we have uh, had as a company is um, through the partnerships that we have been able to um, uh, build uh, together with uh, other companies uh, cooperatives, uh, farmer cooperative societies, um, and other organizations that are in the agribusiness uh, agri space. Um, we have also been uh, very fortunate to work with a number of donors that have been very supportive um, uh, to our organization and to our mission uh, to ensure that uh, you know farmers are able to access uh, agri machinery affordably. Uh, the challenge, uh, we, you know, of course, we, we, we are moving post-COVID, so uh, especially during the COVID uh, you know, uh, time or the, the COVID era, um, there, there was a lot of, uh, we, we faced a, a lot of problems, you know, importing uh, machinery and accessing yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the everywhere. machinery. Mm. Yes. Lockdown and, and, uh, and of course, from the custom, the yes, yes, yes. Mm. And of course, um, even post COVID, um, you know, uh, the dollar shilling rate uh, is also, you know, has really hit us as, as mm. a, an agricultural supplier. So um, these uh, are some of the challenges that we are grappling with uh, even to date. 
Mm -hmm. But we hope that uh, from our interactions with with, with uh, government representatives and all that, we'll mm -hmm. be able to have uh, you know things will sort of settle down. Of okay. course, the, the the issue of pending bills is also um, really affecting us because we have also worked. We have been fortunate to work with counties, mm -hmm. uh, especially under the ADSP uh, program. Yes. Um, and, and this is also an area, yes, yes that uh, we have, yes, this yes. is also that an area that the is, uh, that part of the county is not yes. paying, very many people are yes. wailing about it. Okay. Yes, thank you yes. very much, Mr. Yes. Kevin Dumu. Mr. Sikuku. Yes, thank you. Yes, yes, Mr. Sikuku. Please tell us the challenges and opportunities that you're seeing in Kitale about your architects. The feed industry, the animal feed industry in Kitale is a 50 million, 250 million Kenya shilling daily business. Mm. Mm -hmm. Huge potential in terms of investing on the trading side, especially mm. for those investors who want a, a quick uh, turnaround in their investment. And then there's a huge potential in terms of the technology side because that's mm -hmm. where most of the of the farming is going. Because you see with technology, you will, are going to reduce waste, you're going to uh, open up markets, and then you're going to also bring in um, new technologies, you know, like, mm -hmm. like all these other technologies that all these other guys are talking about. Mm -hmm. So those are the opportunities in Kitali. And mm -hmm. the biggest challenge is just financing, financing the, the different, um, stakeholders in the value chain okay. in terms of financing the farmers to buy more inputs by distributors to you know uh, improve their distribution channels financing mm -hmm. the small aggregates to stock more products and then of course now um, um, getting the technology out there to, to reach as many farmers as possible okay yeah thank you very much uh, mr Welcome. Derek Muraidi please Tell us the challenges and opportunities that you're seeing in, your, in East Africa's Arctic space as you continue trying to promote your Arctic products. Yes, thank you for the question. Uh, I would like to refer to a document uh, back uh, written by Mr. Bitangen Demo on the impediments uh, facing digital uh, uh, services in uh, agriculture. Mm -hmm. And he mentioned on three things, uh, that was technology accessibility, service discoverability, and uh, service value proposition. So the actual uh, value proposition being sold by these services. And um, for us, our first challenge was to be able to identify where, what, how do farmers currently uh, absorb information? Do they mm -hmm. understand this information? And the opportunity we had is to work with the expertise around the farmer. We understood that farmers do actually uh, value their relationship with the agronomist. And uh, the opportunity there is that there is a lot of domain knowledge from this agronomist. Mm -hmm. I mean, they have invested their time to go to academic knowledge to gather all this to help the farmers. So mm -hmm. the real opportunity was to be able to discover these relationships within the stakeholders and try to I work uh, with the knowledge sharing uh, systems they already have currently. If it is uh, adoption of modern fa uh, modern climate smart solutions, mm. the agronomists have a higher incentive to talk to their farmers who they are currently managing. Give the uh, example in Nakuru County thing there, and uh, they've been able to mobilize them even to planting of trees. So there, there are many opportunities given that uh, organizations uh, can partner to be able to also share this data that is essential in climate smart advisory. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Understand from data science that if you combine different uh, facets, you build different perspectives and from those perceptions, interesting ways to solve uh, challenges on the farm between the people who are responsible for the 
in the results of uh, quality and quantity. For what we've uh, seen the big opportunity is the partnership around all those people in the value chain trying to bring this value to farmers. Um, I, I think that's, that's the biggest lesson we've uh, come to understand as a startup. Uh, we've, mm. it, we've not been much uh, on the ground, just a few months in, uh, less than a year, but uh, so much lessons from the different relationships that are in the agri ecosystem. Yeah. Wow. Oh. Wow. Thank you very much. It's very detailed. Okay. Mr. Farid Kea, finally. Uh, Farid Wangara. Uh, challenges. Challenges. Yeah. Challenges and opportunities that you keep facing in the ag tech space as you go on. It's a, it's a very good learning and interactive session. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I think maybe uh, uh, just a highlight of two, some of the two opportunities, we, we are just two of the many other opportunities we are looking at in the, in the interest of time. Mm. Uh, in the space we operate in within the agriculture and advisory space, uh, agriculture insurance and advisory space. Uh, currently, I think uh, the, the insurance uptake within the within the, the sub-Saharan Africa is just below 2%. Uh, yet, if you look at um, the, the, the dependence on uh, food productivity and uh, food sustainability within the same same space, 70% of it still depends on the smallholder sector. So that uh, that already is a big opportunity. There is room for growth. There is a, a room to be able to improve that. And of course, with a lot of innovation and, and trying to do a lot of farmer reach, uh, that requires a lot of tech, a lot of platform thinking beyond uh, the traditional way of doing things. Um, the other thing I think from where we sit in terms of uh, agriculture insurance, uh, we, uh, they always say if, uh, if people within the insurance space are very cynical, uh, climate change is real. And uh, I think with that realization, with everyone, especially within the smallholder uh, sector and, and everyone within the agriculture sector, realizing that climate change is real, that still then presents an opportunity for us to be able to, 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 to develop more, to be able to work with very many other stakeholders within that space. Uh, on the challenges, I think um, there are quite many, but I wouldn't want to focus on, on most of them. But one, one of it, I think, maybe just at issues around regulatory framework. Um, I think there's a need for a lot of uh, African governments to get involved mm. within this uh, 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 tech space, just mm. to see what is happening. How do we make it easier in terms of adoption, in terms of uh, this, I mean, the, 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 the stakeholders participating and doing more. Mm. Um, we are seeing still, um, if you look at the smartphone, uh, app, app, apps, apps are much more cheaper and easier to maintain. But when you look at the uptake of uh, things like mobile uh, smartphones generally, it's still very low within the African context. So that still needs to grow. I'm happy to hear our president said in the next one year, we'll be developing uh, smartphones uh, worth less than 5,000 shillings, which would be historic. But uh, I think it's something we, we need to look forward to. Uh, I think the other thing that still I always like to, to emphasize on is that issues around silos. Uh, we are doing so much independently, yet mm -hmm. if we are able to synergize, uh, because we reach, I'm, I'm, I've, I've had uh, people here who are working in Transoya. We are heavily in almost 42, uh, actually 39 counties currently, we are working in 39 counties. Mm -hmm. I can imagine if you're able to synergize working within with the same same farmers, how amazing that would be in terms of sharing APIs, in terms of all these things they're trying to make sure the Arctic space is developing. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, this has been very, very good and interactive. My question just to you, all five, and uh, please just take like a minute to answer. How are you, because you're riding on uh, a lot of digital revolution and the space and mobile uh, technologies that you're using to, to promote your architects. How do you find the digital literacy of your clients? What is the digital literacy levels according to all of you before we wrap up? Digital literacy here means your ability to read the information sent to you on the mobile phone, the ability to use the applications, yeah? The ability to operate and transact, yeah? Maybe, maybe if I can go. Yeah, one minute, everyone. 
uh, if I can start, maybe I think um, I would say there is evolving. Uh, there, there's a lot of revolution. I I know. I mean, an example is on an M-Pesa transactions. Uh, right now, I don't think any Kenyan in whether a smallholder bottom of a pyramid is unable to transact on M-Pesa. Literally, mm -hmm. they know that. That is something that would not happen maybe three, four, five years ago. There's revolution. Uh, we are seeing like us. We are, like Africa is very heavy on things like um, um, education, training of smallholder farmers, even by 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 USSD technology. So you're finding farmers being able to read some of the uh, advisory services that we share with them. They're able to interact with the platform on a USSD platform, despite the fact that they don't have feature funds. Yes, uh, we still see uh, a bigger percentage of youth now getting into agriculture. Uh, that, of course, then uh, indicates that uh, there is growth ongoing within that sector. So, yeah, we we still look, but hopeful that this is going to grow. Okay, Mr. Derek Murayi, how do you see the digital literacy of your clients? Well, uh, thank you for the question. Also, uh, we have two stakeholders uh, among our client base, and uh, the bigger part uh, portion is the agronomy. So. We for for the bigger or the most the bigger part of the industry with the, in agronomists they do understand uh, the technology they are conversant with uh, uh, feature phones and also digital smartphones so that's why we use the approach of the agronomists to reach the farmers they have invested the time to go to uh, to gain that academ academia and uh, the digital literacy on using management systems. They use their time to do research online and uh, they, they synthesize this information for farmers. Mr. James Kidinji, the digital yeah. literacy levels of your client, clients, yeah. how do you see it? And how, what, 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 what do you feel about it in terms of pro promoting your architect? Yeah, so in essence, uh, mostly dealt with the youth in agriculture, and you'll find that uh, almost every other youth is well versed uh, with technology as of right now. Mm -hmm. And then what we do is extend to them a mobile application. Uh, they don't have to go to a web portal. Yes, the, the web portal functionality is there, but they don't really have to go there. It's a mobile app. And for those who do not have smartphones, we have uh, what we call a USSD platform. Uh, if you have your just your, we call it Kabanga phone, you can mm -hmm. just go dial some short code, log in into your, uh, 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 log in into your farm. And mm -hmm. then on a day to day, for example, if uh, like what I was talking about, the good agricultural practices. If for example, today you're doing tomato farming and you're supposed to do a fertilizer application, in the mm -hmm. morning, as you wake up, the system will send you a message today being a uh, day so and so you are expected to do a b c d on your at your farm so okay. in, in terms of uh, uh, technology uptick i would say uh, it's good yes a lot yes needs to happen in order for it to get uh, to 100 percent. it's not yet there but the mm. technology that we are offering here is catering for those who have feature phones those who have smartphones and also uh, yeah. training has to happen oh, okay. so that they can now appreciate the value that uh, this yeah. ussd short code or this uh, app is going to offer to them okay. thank you thank you very much mr sikuku last but not least please yes thank you yes uh, you'll be you'll be very very surprised uh farmers are very tech -sized people just that you need to understand which technology fits uh the, that particular segment of farmers so with the very older generation of course the ussd works like magic with the younger generation who are in facebook tiktok any app you will introduce any type of you know technology breakthrough in terms of farming in terms of you know anything that goes on in their lives they embrace it very quickly and then now you have the middle age guys who are between the USSDs and the, and the mobile apps. So it uh, basically just um, uh, evolved, it evolves around who, which type of farmer, which segment are they in? Are they in poultry? Are they in dairy? Which age are they in? 
you know, which phone do they have? And then now we can quickly make decisions on which type of training suits them. But you'd be really surprised. Farmers, are, if they're in Facebook, they can do anything. <laughs> and most of them are. So, uh, yeah. Very interesting. So, gentlemen, thank you so much for this interactive session. We'll be having these things once a month. Uh, we are still onboarding other companies. We'd like them to be quite a number enough, which uh, we can now then roll into other programs that we are launching for interactive sessions and generating solutions and also resource mobilization, like I mentioned. Uh, so feel free to join our next uh, session. Uh, you have registered already, obviously. So what I would say is, uh, we are just starting this and that you can see already the synergies that you're making like Mr. Sikuku and Mr. Kea already, yeah? So we just keep on. Uh, this is a platform where we collegially meet once a month. This is for East Africa. We are maybe going to bring even uh, architects from Uganda where you can listen what they're doing. Uh, we're going to bring architects from Rwanda as we go and expand. So. Any information that you have now that you have registered will be reaching you easily. And uh, whatever we are doing, you're welcome on board to come and uh, listen to us as we go. Now already your members, uh, let us build this thing as we go and we help our farmers because generally Kenya, the extension services that we used to rely on where we had the, the extension guys coming with motor motorbikes, that is an error that is gone. This is the space that is going to ride and bring information to the farmers, especially now that uh, they have opened the door to biotechnology. So thank you very much, each one of you, for joining us. So thank you very much, Mr. James Gidinji, Mr. Sikuku, Mr. Derek, and Mr. Farid Wangara, and Mr. Kelvin Dungu. Thank you so, so much. Please let us soldier on. This is a platform where we'll collegially exchange and where we are stuck, we'll get solutions. And where we, we need resource mobilization to, to build the platform better, can we come back and uh, even write proposals about our architects and our forums and how we're going. Mm -hmm.